Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and this is a very exciting video because I'm gonna be putting together the ultimate beginner's deep sky astrophotography rig and it's gonna look a little different than you think. No telescopes involved. This is very affordable, budget-friendly gear, really entry level. So uh, if you're into that kind of thing and you wanna build your first deep sky astrophotography rig on the cheap, this video is for you. Okay, first let me get this out of the way. So what some people consider cheap can be expensive to others, but the art of astrophotography is notoriously expensive in terms of the kind of gear you need. This is kind of an entry level bare bones point to enter the hobby and start taking tracked long exposure images of deep sky objects in the night sky. So let's get right into it, what we're working with here. The first thing you probably notice right behind me here is the star tracker. This is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. This is the newer version, the 2i. The older version is pretty close to the same thing, but this is the star tracker I recommend, and it's the biggest purchase out of them all, other than the camera. You don't need a star tracker to start taking long exposure images in the night sky, but just expect those stars begin to trail, and you really can't tap into those longer focal length camera lenses until you get a tracker, so that's really important. There's a few other great ones. The Ioptron Skyguider Pro is also awesome. The camera itself, this is very exciting. I purchased this just for the sake of this video and a few other really cool secret projects coming up, a nice collab coming up. But this is an entry level DSLR, one of the most top selling entry level DSLRs right now, the Canon EOS Rebel T7. It is nothing special, but it came in this kit package with two lenses and a carrying bag and a memory card for $550 American, which is really great considering the price of some of the more advanced cameras. So if you're just getting into photography and astrophotography, a kit like this is really great. It's not gonna let you down. And man, there's some really fun things you can do with a kit like this, and I can't wait to get started. Just a few more items to unpack here before I really dig into things. A remote shutter release cable. So this just controls the imaging session for the camera you can set in how long you want the exposure to be, how often, how many. So really handy, especially when you're starting to use a star tracker and take multiple images. And then it came with a 16 gigabyte memory card, a class 10, which is gonna work just fine for us. We'll capture lots of images on this little DSLR. And then Paint Shop Pro 2021 Ultimate. Won't be using that at all. Lastly, we have a little ball head here, just a generic Amazon ball head. Niwer is the brand, and this we're just gonna use to attach to the top of the star tracker just to give us a little more flexibility in terms of the angles that we point the camera in. But let's dig right into the camera and specifically the lenses. So we're right around the thousand dollar range thus far with the camera at 550 US dollars and the star tracker just around 450. So those are the two big expenses to get over with, but they will last you for a long time. You can have lots of fun with it. So let's look at these camera lenses that came with this kit. So there's two lenses in here. One is in with the included with the camera itself. That's the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. That's a very common lens with these Canon cameras that comes with it. So if you've got an entry level Canon Rebel DSLR, chances are you have that 18 to 55 millimeter lens. We'll get into that next. But first, the 75 to 300. So if you understand how lenses work, this is a zoom telephoto. That 300 is your magnification, 300 millimeter focal length. And that's some pretty serious magnification. So if you're planning on taking pictures of nebulae and galaxies up close, you need that magnification, right? The problem is this is a pretty cheap lens. I've actually, this is my second one. I sold the first one. The optics aren't great. It's a under $200 lens. Included with the bundle, you get plenty of use out of it, but you will outgrow it and become unsatisfied with it over time. To start out with though, you can have a lot of fun with this lens. 58 millimeter thread filter size. It does have autofocus, but we'll just be using manual focus with this lens. So the aperture or the f-stop on this lens is f4 to f5.6. When it comes to lenses for astrophotography, some of those fast lenses are what you want. I've talked about the Sigma 24 millimeter f1.4 before letting in plenty of light to reach that sensor, shooting at that wide open aperture of f1.4. In comparison, at f4 to f5.6, when fully zoomed out, not so fast, but it will get the job done. Typically with these lenses like this, you wanna stop down to those higher f-stops anyway to get sharper stars. 
With this lens, I have a feeling the sweet spot is probably around f6.3, around there. So a bit slower, but you'll see what I mean later. Now we'll pull out the DSLR, the T7, and the kit lens. This is so much fun. So when you buy a new camera, of course, it comes with a brand new battery, a charger, and a strap. You don't want to put that strap on there if you're you know, attaching a camera to your star tracker, you don't want that camera strap blown around in the wind. So don't attach that. There's the camera here. Small, lightweight, very capable little DSLR camera. Now what I'll say about the T7 is that it doesn't have that flip out LCD screen like the T7i do and some of the other intermediate level cameras. That feature would be really well appreciated for astrophotography because if you can picture this thing pointing straight up, you wanna flip out that screen and be able to adjust settings like focus and change camera settings and all that. But very capable little camera and if you've got this camera here, I've got great news for you. It can take some amazing astro photos with it. Kit lens is in there somewhere, I'll pull that out. This is like Christmas. Okay, here's the kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter. So again, a zoom lens, but a much shorter focal length. So really the most useful focal length for astrophotography on this little lens is probably at 18 millimeters. Take those wide angle shots. With a crop sensor DSLR like the T7, it's gonna be a little bit tighter than you'd have with a full frame camera, but still plenty wide at 18 millimeters. So this is an F 3.5 to 5.6. So 3.5 at that shortest focal length of 18 millimeters, and then 5.6 at the 55 millimeters. So again, similar boat, just kind of an entry level, kind of a cheap feeling lens, but it will get the job done and still be a lot of fun. I, I personally get a lot of enjoyment out of really maximizing the performance out of the gear that I have. So not bad, a very capable camera that will last for years to come in two lenses for about 550 US dollars. Nice little kit, and it even came with this Canon bag, and I've got about 10 of these now. Here is the Star Tracker, the Skywatcher Star Adventure, and this really is the key to the whole astrophotography rig. Without this, you just have a camera on a tripod, which is fine. Speaking of tripods, this is a really nice carbon fiber, really tall and rigid tripod. You want to get a very decent tripod. Don't skimp on a cheap tripod. You need that stability. There's a million tripods available. Aim to spend about $100 on your, on your tripod at least to get a quality model. This one was a little more than that. It's probably a bit overkill for this Star Tracker. This is the Skywatcher Star Adventure and basically its job, it slowly moves with the motion of the night sky and allows you to take tracked exposures. The key to these though, you have to balance the load using the counterweight here. Camera goes on top and then you, if you have a balanced load, you'll get that nice smooth tracking. Any equatorial mount needs to be polar aligned with the celestial pole to have that accurate tracking of the motion of the night sky. So all those basics of tracking the night sky and equatorial mounts come into play here. But once you get that, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how we use this camera and lens on the tracker to get pictures of the night sky. There's a few pieces to this Star Tracker and I've done a full review on this one, actually the earlier model than this before. But this is the wedge base here where you actually set your latitude. And then the Star Tracker itself is just this part on top, slides into the base on the right angle for your latitude and of course you can adjust that with this knob it goes up and down and then it's actually got the counterweight kit here too this is the pro pack so you attach your camera on the top here and this is the counterweight to balance things out very ingenious system because there's a few ways to actually balance this rig uh, which kind of sets this one apart from the competition but on top of this star tracker this is where the ball head comes in we can of course just mount the camera to the threaded screw at the top here, but then we're limited to this angle that the star tracker's on. Whereas if we put a ball head on between that, right here, so we've got the ball head attached on the top there. We take the plate out, attach this to the bottom of the camera. I mean, if you've ever used a tripod before, I'm sure you know how to use a ball head. And now we can point the camera and lens in the whatever orientation we want with the flexibility of this ball head. And this camera is nice and light and these lenses as well, so we'll have no issues in terms of carrying the load. I think this ball head's rated for 11 pounds uh, and that's getting into the overall payload capacity of the Star Tracker itself. So no issues there, but I'm much more flexible in the ways we can point by attaching the ball head to the top of the platform here. Very capable rig and uh, one of the last pieces we have here 
is this remote shutter release cable. So this camera, and you wanna to check to get the right one for your camera, has the little audio style jack on the side here, and I can plug this in and control my sessions. So this is essentially the rig here. I'll just get it set up with a lens on it so you can see it fully ready to go. So I'll attach the remote shutter release cable here, and we've got ourselves a nice, little very capable astrophotography rig now there's something i know a lot of you are thinking right now and that is well this is a stock dslr camera it's not modified for astrophotography is shooting with a rig like this a waste of time absolutely not so a modified camera yes it will pick up more of those reds in the hydrogen alpha wavelength of a lot of emission nebula and deep sky objects so yes very powerful to have an astro modified camera you could get this one modified later on if you want with a stock camera though, there's plenty you can do. And a lot of times I actually prefer to use a stock camera in terms of the types of colors it produces and the images. So for reflection nebulae, for star clusters, for galaxies, a stock camera just creates these beautiful, cool blue colored images that I absolutely love. White balance and all that you can change afterwards just like you would in landscape photography or any type of serious photography, you'll be shooting in raw image format. So we can, we can really manipulate those images after the fact. But this is our rig here. So typically with a lens like this, because even at the shortest focal length of 75 millimeters, we're gonna need to track the motion of the night sky or we'd have blurry photos. So let's say we're taking 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 second exposures. Without this remote shutter release cable, you're limited to a 30 second maximum on bulb or manual mode of this camera. ISO settings that we'd be using is somewhere along the lines of 800 or 1600. Knowing these Canon Rebel DSLRs, that's probably the sweet spot in terms of the noise performance in those higher ISOs. But the real power of this rig is by taking multiple exposures. So by capturing say 40 to 50 90 second exposures with a rig like this tracked, you can create some really beautiful images after the image processing has been applied. I'm probably gonna use this lens around the midway point, around 150 millimeters. So I'm kinda of at that mid range where I can still capture deep sky objects, but it also has the benefits of the shorter focal length, not as demanding on the tracking, but a very capable little system here. And uh, if you've got a camera like this, add a star tracker and you are off to the races. So out of the two lenses, I think the 75 to 300 will be something I would use more often than that 18 to 55, but that's just because of the time of year. There's some great winter nebulae and galaxy deep sky objects that I wanna shoot with some longer focal lengths. Between those two lenses, you can have a lot of fun. So we're at about a thousand for the camera and the tracker, the two key components with the lenses. Add another 100 for the tripod. We're at 1100 remote shutter release cable, 20 bucks, ball head, another 20 bucks. So just over a thousand dollars for a very capable astrophotography rig. And I'm going to prove it to you what's capable with this rig in an upcoming collaboration video with someone you know that's going to be so much fun. And it just, I love the idea of maximizing the performance out of a very beginner level rig like this. I am really excited to start using this rig under some clear, dark skies. I have high hopes for the performance I can get out of this very budget friendly rig. And I hope you follow along for the ride and watch my progress with it. And until next time, clear skies. Oh, someone from Canada calling. Hello, this is Nico. Mr. Carver, how's it going, man? Oh, hey Trevor, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really good. I actually just got a new DSLR camera kit that I want to try out. Oh, no kidding, me too. Really? Well, that's weird. Yeah, it's weird. We should do a shootout though. I am so in. All right, well, let's set some ground rules. How about one night, one kit lens, Pick any target you want and the best image wins. Just using this new DSLR kit in a star tracker. Right. And then we'll do a full video on the reveal. You read my mind. <laughs>